الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لهبة في الله as we mentioned countless times and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide you and unite the hearts of the Muslims because Islam is one deen and the Muslims have broken into so many groups and sects to the extent where some of them make takfir of others they declare others to be disbelievers some of them are excessive in their tabdi of calling others to be innovators just because they disagree with them. They could have the same ulama, they could have the same uh, methodology in giving dawah, they could have the same aqidah, everything, but because they differ over one person, you sat with him, you gave a conference with him, we saw you like him, you said this about him, you praised him, you cannot be Salafi. You're not. It's not in their hand, ayah al and it's not in my hand. And so I wanted to mention, because the Prophet ﷺ told us in two very important ahadith, which shows us Ahl Sunnah should be balanced. Many ahadith. One of the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ showing us that we would break into sects. So we don't have any problem with speaking against Ahl Bid'ah with the truth. When we see a mistake, we speak out against it. And we advise our brothers and sisters. And if they're a caller to bid'ah, then we deal with them in a different way. And these are from some of the kawaii. This is not the time or place to talk about all those kawaii and shurut that walillah alhamd. We studied with the ulama, walillah alhamd. Ahabati fillah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, If tarakat al-yahud ala ihti wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-nasara ala ithnatayn wa sab'in firqa, وَسَتَفْتَارِكُ هَذِي أُمَّالَ ثَلَاثَ وَسَبْعِينَ فَرْقَ كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارَ الْوَاحِدَ كُلَّ مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلُ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَاسْحَابِي The Prophet ﷺ said the Jews were breaking the 71 sects, the Christians in the 72 sects, and my ummah in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they say, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So we know that our success uh, uh, is with following the salaf of this ummah. The Prophet والسلام, said, Prophet والسلام, said, the best people are, are those of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Then those who follow them. This means the Sahaba, Tabi'in, with Taba'a Tabi'in, Radiallahu Ta'ala, Mijma'in, who Rahimahullah Jami'in. Ahabati Fillah, we know this path. Even Ahl Bid'ah, many of them know this path. If you ask an Ashari, they will say that they want to follow the Salaf of this Ummah. But they'll say that the Salaf of this Ummah, even though their Aqidah began with, uh, with uh, Abu Hassan al-Ashari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, a great Imam, who started off in, in deviance, it was Kulabiyah in his Aqidah, and he changed to this Aqidah, then he came back to Ahl Sunnah in the last part of his life. Even though their creed began approximately 150 years Hijriya after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Ahl Sunnah takes their creed from the beginning. We take it from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how the, how the Sahaba understood the religion, their methodology, their madhab. But again, this is not the place to go into those things in details. But you can go back to the durus about Aqid Tawasati and some of the other durus that we've done. And that many of our brothers and sisters, uh, our brothers from the Tulab al Am, possibly even some of the sisters, have taught these books. MashaAllah, they're, they're in the English language. For those who are dependent upon English language, they're there. And they're translated. Ben Uthaymin Shah, Sheikh Salman Fozan Shah. I think uh, uh, many shurahat are translated now in English of those books where you can get the details from the ulama. Ahabatifillah, the reason I made this video is because a brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him for his sincere advice. He gave, he was operating by the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Adin al nasiha where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the religion is sincere advice. The brother was advising me because he said, I put a like on a video because I saw some brothers teaching uh, a very important book. They're teaching fiqh. 
and they're teaching the people fiqh in their community. And I heard them mentioning the scholars they were teaching from, and they were keep teaching Tawheed. They love Tawheed. They call the Kitab al-Sunnah. So I make my judgments based on Kitab al-Sunnah. I don't know what's going on in the UK, and I really don't care, in fact. I, I love to see anyone who calls the Kitab Allah with Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf, then I consider them my brothers. Regardless of what so-and-so said, and this student of knowledge said about them, and this one said, and this one said he's like this, and no, that doesn't, that's not of my concern. My concern is what they call to. And the ulama, this is what the scholars of Islam, because we studied with them. We took those quiet and we're trying to practice those quiet and principles, and we go to the scholars, we call them, and we ask them for advice about these issues. Should we get involved in every fitna there is? Oh, should we talk about this one? The ulama, none of them advise that. Even some of the ulama that get involved in the affairs with some of the uh, du'at in America, they don't like to hear that garbage. They don't want to hear about this one and this one, pointing the fingers at this one, and wasting time when the Ashadis are making elm, uh, elmi videos. I just listened to a couple, some of the Sufis. They're bringing elm, and they're bringing fiqh fi deen. And you're talking about your brother based without even co-ided principles, and a lot of time without masus, based on your desires. Wasting time, ayyul habati fillah. This is not marhub. This is not something that's desirable. Go to the ulama and you'll see. Ask them yourself. Get on the phone with some of the mashayikh that know English if you don't believe what I'm saying. See who, who accepts fitna, who loves fitna, who wants to talk about these people in the UK they've never even met and these ones and want to see this fitna growing. Ahabatifillah. This is not something beneficial. And I made this video not to defend myself, because I, I am, I'm no one to defend. I'm someone, I studied a little bit, well, well, alhamdulillah, I definitely sat with many different scholars from Yemen to Saudi and that's where basically most of my Islamic training came from, well, alhamdulillah. And I don't have big teskiyat, but I have some teskiyat. I know some mashayikh, and they know me by name, well, alhamdulillah. But that's not something, that's neither here nor there. Because as the ulama say, a qawaid fiqiyya, this is a, a fiqh principle, the ulama say, al-ibra bi haqaiq, lisa bi musammiyat, that the proof of something is in its, the reality of a substance, not in its name. Someone can call themselves salafi, but they're not, they don't follow the salaf. They have none of the uh, attributes of the salaf. Not in manners, not in fiqh, not in understanding of the deen, not in the min minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. So it comes to what you're practicing. Do you call the kitab illah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam above everything and the method of the salaf or do you call to yourself? Our, our shaykh, and I sat for a brief time under his beard, Shaykh Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, Allah yarhamahu, 1997, we went to Yemen. This Alam Rabbani, you can get it, it's recorded. In one of his very famous tapes, it's one of my favorite tapes, and I love to quote this quote of the Sheikh, because this sums it up, and I'm not going to speak anymore after this. This, this Yaqfina. The Sheikh said, Dawa to Ahl Sunnah. Here, Dawa to Ili Kitabillah, Min Kitabillah. وَمِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ لَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ The Shaykh said, Rahmatullah alayhi, may Allah bless him with Jannah to Fardos, because he taught us the, 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 the love for the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he was a shift in Nas al Shaykh Muqbil bin Hadi was very firm on against and stern against his be about calling the groups even himself he didn't say you had to come to the match and that's didn't we only know you for salafia oh you have to like me and you have to like the the, the mashayikh and the students in the match he wasn't like that that wasn't what he was on he was on he wanted to see that you really were calling the kitab and the fam is salaf as ummah not calling to you not calling your five brothers, not calling you these, this group or this clique. I don't call anyone to myself. And I don't call anyone, even to some of the brothers that I know are beneficial, I don't even call to them. But I try to urge the people, if they have the ability to go to the ulama, and go to some of the translations of the ulama. But no doubt, you need your students of knowledge. If you don't know Arabic, you need them in your, your thing. 
and we're in such a great need to not shrink the Salafi du'a, but grow them. But grow them and they have to have knowledge and they have to have wisdom and they have to have fiqh fi deen. They have to treat the people with proper manners and adab like the ulama do. Because we don't see that from many of our brothers, may Allah forgive us and them, may Allah correct us and them. Some of our brothers who came before us, they, they some of them wreck the dawah. Some brothers wreck the dawah. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not calling names. But I know so many personally. And I've witnessed some of the, the mistakes the brothers make. Mistakes. Akhta. Because that's not from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. And it's not from the dawah to the sunnah. And it taints the sunnah. So many people you say you're Salafi, they run. And the point is not to have the people come to you and come. But you want to invite them to the haq. But you want to invite them. You know, invite them to that which is better. You got to give, show them. If you're going to talk about Jamaat al Tablik, you better show the people what is better. If you're going to talk about the Ashiris, you better show the people what's better. You better have some knowledge too and some fiqh fi deen so you can back it up. If you're going to talk about this one and talk about this one, you better have something better. And you also have to speak with the truth. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is Dawa to Ahl Sunnah, this is the Dawa of the Salafis, is based on this hadith as well, as well as the other ahadith and Kitab wa Sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَتْقَلُ فِي مَيْزَيْنَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ عُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنْ اللَّهَ يُبْخِدُ وَالْفَائِشَ الْبِدِي The Prophet ﷺ said, there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So if you backbite someone without the right to do so, you're going to be held accountable. When I speak about certain individuals, I speak about them with the knowledge that I've gained. And I speak about them, you never hear me say, I don't like Norman Ali Khan, or I don't like Yasser Qadi, or I don't like Hamza Yusuf, because of my desires. But I warn against them, and I want good for them. I want them to come to Kitab wa Sunnah. Because I see that they're calling people to misguidance. That's why. Because when we see Kitab or Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf, we don't see them. We see what their statements are going against that. That's why we refute them. We don't refute them to make us bigger. We don't refute them to make them smaller. But we want to refute people to call them, to, to warn the people against their harm. The harm that it harms to Islam. When we refute the Tekfiris, we refute them. We want guidance for them. We we'll refute them because they cause harm to the ummah. They call, they declare other Muslims to be disbelievers. They call, call people to do violence and terror, and they open that evil door, a wicked door which is not from Islam. It's not from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. La abadan. Nor is it from the fam of the Salaf of this ummah. So habitifillah, I don't group myself with a bunch of students, no matter what tiskiyas they have. That's not, that's not, <coughs> I didn't hear any of the ulama ever tell me that, that I have to sit with so-and-so, I have to think so-and-so Salafi, I have to, no, I never heard that. And I'll just, out of my humble experience, 1997 is when I began to begin to, to seek, uh, seek knowledge. It doesn't mean I'm a big student of knowledge or anything, I'm, I'm a very small, very small student of knowledge. And I have so many mistakes and so many sins that I'm always trying to work on. Ta'ala, May Allah bless us all to remove our sins. But I definitely have some experience. Because 1997, when some of you may not have even been born, we were sitting under the beards of some of these great imams. Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi. Then I came to Saudi and I've sat with who? I've sat with many mashayikh in Medina. And I'll just name a few so the people don't have a mystery. So they can't say, oh, he's making this up, or he's talking about this, or this and that and the other. But no, we sat with Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abayda Jabri. We sh sat with uh, Alama, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin al Abad, his son, Sheikh Abdul Razak, Sheikh Ibrahim al who I spent a lot of time with, and, and I consider... Uh, one who I, I spent more more time with than, than many of the other mashayikh, Sheikh Ali Tuwajri, Sheikh uh, Alama uh, Ali Nasser al uh, Sheikh uh, Alama Sheikh Saleh, uh, Sheikh uh, Saleh Al-Sahimi, and many others, many others, Ayyallah Habit al Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, and others when I could sit with them. And we benefited from them. So we're not speaking about, and, and, and my point being, none of them 
I never heard out of my, my own ear that I have to sit with this one and I have to work with this one and I should love this one. They didn't say that. And there's nothing wrong if they said that you should love your brother. And, and he, this is your brother from Ahl Sunni and you should cooperate with them. No. But to say that I have to follow them or that we have to be a group? No. And this is what not Imam Muqbil didn't teach. And way before him, many ulama, they didn't teach this. Look at the Kibara in this time. Bin Baz didn't teach it. But, uh, Sheikh Al-Bani, Imam Al-Bani didn't teach it. Uh, Im Imam Muqbil, Imam uh, Bin Uthimin, they didn't teach this. They didn't teach the call to them even. They called the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Fahim Salaf of this Ummah and that we need to be balanced. Because all of these issues, if you want to talk about Hajr from someone, if you want to talk about speaking about someone, Ghiba, if you want to talk about warning against this one, boycotting this one, whatever the issue is, as I spoke to seven ulama, and I have it recorded, seven, how many ulama? Seven in Sardia. Most of them in Medina. And most of them are known, uh, as I mentioned, and I recorded it. Seven. And I asked them this question. I said, is it permissible to give da'wah uh, uh, in the messages of Ahl <coughs> Bidah? So some of you will run and your hair will turn white. But we know that these things have fiqh. They have quiet in principles. What did every single one of them say in one way or another? Mabni ala maslaha wa mafsada that it depends on the harms and the benefits. And they all gave beautiful golden advice and one day I want to put it together in a booklet and spread it out there so people can have an idea because these things are not black and white. So brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in, in, in a few group of brothers that you, you love here. Love them and work with them, especially if they're from Ahl Sunnah. But don't think that the haq is with them in every issue. That's no, no one, no one. Because if you say that, you're going against the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, Salawat Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayin tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent. So the haq is not as uh, the Salaf used to say, La ya'raf, la ya'raf al haq bi rijal. Walakin ya'raf al rijal bi haq. We don't know the truth by men, but we know men by the truth. Meaning we use the haq to judge men. We don't say the haq is with so-and-so. No matter what, Shaykh, my opinion, my humble opinion, and many of the ulama that I sit with, say, Shaykh Salim ibn Fawzan is, is one of the, our greatest imams that we have living now, that we go, especially with Aqidah and Tawheed and stuff. Doesn't mean he's the most knowledgeable in every subject, that doesn't mean that. But it means he's one of the Kibar ulama, and he, you know, and the Mufti, and, and many great Mashaykh, you have in Riyadh, uh, and, and all around Saudi is a Na'mah, and in Yemen, and all over the world, in fact. But especially in Saudi, you have the fadl of many great Imams that are still living. And with that, does that mean every statement, does that mean every issue is the haq? Ahabatifillah, that goes against those kawaiid and principles. That doesn't mean every issue, but because they're sincere, and because they're a person who's known for the haq and who's sincere in making ijtihad for their ijtihad in a particular mas'ala, they get one ajr if they make a mistake, and two if they get it correct. Don't you know, Habatifillah, that in fiqh, in many masail, the imams of this deen, even the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, in issues of fiqh and ijtihad, some had ijtihad. They had many, in many Messiah they had ijtihad. Maybe a hadith didn't come to them. Maybe they, they understood the hadith. A beautiful issue is Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he, he, he said in a very famous hadith about wudu. He said, سمعت uh, Khalili sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamah yablagh al-hili in the I've forgotten the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or in, in this narration, but meaning that the uh, from the traces of wudu that a person would have white light. And 
So whoever is able to increase their those traces of light on their face and, and their body, then they should do so. That's part of the hadith and that, that's the shahid. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to, from his ijtihad, and he didn't do this out in public, but he mentioned this, <coughs> that he used to make his wudu up to munkabain, uh, up to his shoulders. Now we know we can't, we can't do that. That's not, you know, the places for the wudu is not there. But that was from the ijtihad of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa miru mu'mineen fi hadith. And with that, he would still be rewarded. One reward for that ijtihad. So, Allah, as Imam Malik said, every person can be refuted or they might get something correct. And then he pointed to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, everyone can, can get something correct and can be refuted on an issue. Except the inhabitant of that grave, talking about the Prophet ﷺ. You mean that we all make mistakes. Even our great Imams, they make, a mis they make mistakes. And we don't follow anyone in their mistake. If we have the ability to look into the issue, or it's been made clear from the ulama, Rabbaniyun, that it's a mistake and that we shouldn't follow it. So we follow the haq wherever it leads us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafir, us kan tayyibu amal al-mutakabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.